All right, this time we're going to look algebraically at finding the solution to intersections of planes. And if I have my calculator, I'm just going to use polysimult. So if I go into my calculator, you can see that I've done this one already. So simultaneous equation solver in polysimult. And I have a 3 by 3 system. And I put in all my coefficients and then my constants on the right. So negative 4, 2, negative 7, and then 2, 1, 1, 0 x's, 3, negative 2, 3, 1, 2. And then if I hit solve, I can see that these, point, these planes intersect at a single point. In the last video, I, it's possible I said that that means that these three planes have to be parallel to each, or sorry, perpendicular to each other. I can look at them and see straight away they're not parallel because none of these normals are multiples of each other. However, these planes also are not perpendicular to each other because I can see that 2, 1, 1 dotted with 0, 3, negative 2, that does not equal 0, but these planes still intersect just at a single point. And I know that because I got a single point as the solution. So. What I said earlier, to have a single point of intersection, the planes being perpendicular to each other, that's not actually true. It can, uh, they can still intersect at just a single point, even if they're not perpendicular to each other. And I can see that sort of in this picture here. So imagine that these two, the orange and the blue, those don't have to be perpendicular to each other. This orange could slide more out towards us and slide backwards this way, and they would still just intersect at this single point. If I wanted to solve this without my calculator, well, I would do that using row operations. So I could think about multiplying this top row by 2. And the reason I would do that is because I have negative 2z down here. Actually, I already see a 2z here, so I would start by adding these two together. So I would get 3x plus 4y is equal to negative 5. I could do what I said earlier, multiply this top row by 2. So I would get 4x plus 2y plus 2z equals negative 4. And then I could add that to my 3y minus 2z equals 2. If I added those, I would get 4x plus 5y equals 2, sorry, equals negative 2. Now I could use these two equations and figure out what x and y are. So from these two, I would end up with, uh, let's multiply this by 4, 12x plus 16y is negative 20. Multiply by 3, 12x plus 15y is negative 6. Subtract the 2. I would get y is equal to negative 20 minus 6 is negative 14, and something went wrong because my y value should have been negative 2. So let's see what happened here. Multiplied everything by 2, but I didn't multiply my negative 4. So that should have been negative 8, and then add it together, I would have gotten negative 6, and then multiply by 3, and I would have had negative 18, and then negative 20 minus negative 18 would give me negative 2. If I didn't already know the answer, when I tried to plug in to check to my other systems, I would have gotten something that didn't work. Here, thankfully, though, I could check. So now that I know y is negative 2, I could come plug in over here. 3x plus negative 8. So 3x minus 8 is negative 5. That means that 3x is going to equal to 3, so x is 1. Now that I know an x and a y, actually, even once I knew my y, I could come in over here and say, uh, negative 6 minus 2z is equal to 2, so negative 2z is 8, that means that z is negative 4. So I got the same solution using a bunch of 
linear combinations, not so pleasant. And there's a way we could do it with matrix algebra, but learning the matrix algebra in this situation is just not worth it. Most of the time I'll have my calculator. If not, I can set up linear equations. If my solution ends up working out that I get a single x, y, z, that means my three points met at a singular, sorry, my three planes met in a singular point. In the next video, we'll look at what happens when that is not true.